All right, good job. And we're going to go live on Facebook. All right, we're doing that. We're all set up there. All right, so we're going to mastermind with Neil Schwartz today. We have uh, Tony Medina. Tony, you there? We connected. We're okay. Can you hear me? Can I hear you? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? All right, fantastic. Very good. So, first of all, we want to congratulate Tony. Uh, he's part of a team where Angela, his wife, um, can't make it here today because she just had a baby. We want to give him a big congratulations there. Good job. Excellent. When are you going to have her outdoor knocking again, Tony? <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe a few months. So I, that's up to her. Okay, got it. Good job. All right. Good, good answer. Great answer, actually. Okay, so Tony, you're from which marketplace? So uh, Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Did you start working Las Vegas market or did you move into the Las Vegas market? Um, I moved here. I was born in Jersey and I was raised in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, a little small town nobody's ever heard of. And I met my broker, Juan Martinez, about nine years ago. And I just bought a one way ticket just to sell real estate. Really? Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. That's a great story. <laughs> uh, so you were in Vegas or you met him someplace else? Uh, my father moved here when I was a small boy and they knew each other through NAREP, uh, you know, National Association of Real Estate Professionals. And they started talking, one offered to coach me and uh, long story short, the rest is history. Fantastic. Fantastic. So you've been working for uh, for one in Las Vegas. At, I think the company is uh, Americana, Century That's 21 correct. Americana, right? Got right. it. Okay, and you've been working with them for how long? Uh, about eight years. Good, good. And when you started, did you have a big sphere of influence in Vegas? Or you, as you mentioned, you were moving from Pennsylvania, but uh, so Juan gave you a lot of deals. Is that how it worked? Uh, no, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not how it worked at all. He gave me a just listed, just sold script, and that was it. He didn't give me anything else. He just gave me the just listed sold script and a stack of phone numbers. And I had maybe three people in my database. Got it. And that's where you, how you started in Las Vegas, Nevada, eight years ago. That's right. Okay. So how'd that first year look? Uh, it was just contacts, high level volume, coming in and making 50, 75, 100 contacts a day, double dialing. Um, and that was it. It was just, just listed, just sold for the first six or nine months. And then after that, I started moving on to expires and bows. Okay. And what, uh, so make any sales, take any listings? During yes. The first year? So the first year I grossed $120,000 in GCI. Um, I how many sales about, would that be more or less? About 21. Okay. So about five, $6,000 gross per deal. Yeah, about, yeah, okay. about Got 12 it. of those were uh, just listed, just sold. Okay, good. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. And uh, so that was your first year. Um, by the way, did you meet your wife at that time? Were you a team then or? So, uh, yeah, when I first moved here, um, I moved with my father. We were both single bachelors in the middle of Las Vegas. You know, we we're it was just crazy. Um, yeah, that could be a mess. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I met her. She saw me and she said, hey, I want to, you know, buy you a cup of coffee and pick your brain. I see you're doing really well. You know, can I can I just ask you a few questions? And the rest is history. So she was an agent at the time working for uh, Americana or Juan Martinez. So she started um, as his personal assistant like 12 years ago and left the company and then came back as a showing agent for one of the top agents in the company. And that's that's when we met. Got it. Okay, cool. All right. And how many years ago was that? Uh, that was about five. Uh, no, that was about six, seven years ago. Six, seven years ago and two kids ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good for you. Congratulations. <laughs> Great story. I love it. Thank you. Um, okay. So that first year, 20 transactions, uh, some uh, most of it, it sounded like, was you reaching out 
to the world looking for business. Now, at that period of time, was Las Vegas ramping up? Was it kind of neutral? You know, it's gone through in the last 12 or 15 years, some high highs and some low lows. Uh, yeah, significantly. So prices, you know, obviously after the collapse dropped by more than 50%. So when I started in around 2012, 2013, um, they were they were ramping up. They were just getting better. So since I've started, home prices every year just continue to, to rise. Okay, good. Excellent. Fantastic. And uh, so your second and third year in business, um, you were working expireds for sale by owners, some of that kind of stuff. How was business ramping up at that time for you? So, yeah, I started working expires for sale by owners and business started ramping up. And that's right around when I met, you know, Angela. And we, over those two years, things got a little bit more serious. And um, I took a break and decided to go to lending. So I went to go become a loan officer for a year, realized that that's not where my passion was. And then I ended up coming back. So during those years, there was a lot of challenges. There was a lot of struggles. There was a lot of, you know, discovering, self-discovery, trying to master life. It's not just, you know, coming into work and getting on the phones and producing business. It's, you know, managing your health, managing your mindset, managing your family. So there was a lot of that going on for the first few years. Got it. Okay. All right. So as you were doing that, uh, how was how was your business growing? I mean, was there... So this- Go ahead. Sorry. B- business was growing pretty consistently. It was about 20% growth year over year. Uh-huh. Um, you know, we went from a hundred thousand to about 150, um, to about 200, 250, 300. It just continued to grow every year. Got it. And 2020 COVID for you, um, year ending, uh, 20 was, uh, how many deals and how much gross income for the two of you? So it was about 320,000 gross and it was right around 40, I believe 41 transactions closed. Okay, got it. And do you guys as a team have divided um, responsibilities or do you just both do similar stuff? How's that work for you guys? Um, So so that's an interesting question because we've we've spoken with our coaches about this intensely and our personal struggle for us is that Uh, about one third of my business is the Latino community. So I'm fluent in Spanish and my wife, she's Filipina. So she's fluent in Tagalog. So it was very difficult to try to divide up the responsibilities with clients. When I have to speak to some of them, she has to speak with some of them and we can't, you know, interchange all customers. Got it. Okay. So what it sounds, so do you have a TC or an assistant or anything like that? So we hired our first TC last year. So for the first couple of years that we were together, we were pretty much just handling all the paperwork and doing everything ourselves. And and that was really one of our biggest mistakes. We, we weren't delegating. We didn't. And and that's something that we, we learned, we grew through it and we did eventually hire transaction coordinator. And that's just helping our business just kind of explode this year. Got it. Okay. So when you say explode 2021, you're on track. Well, how, uh, closed and pending so far, what is it? So closed and pending, uh, we've got 28 closed, 10 pending, 28 closed and 10 pendings. Got it. Okay. So 38 transactions, mostly listings, mostly sellers. How does that divide out for you guys? Um, right now, it's about, it's about 60% listings and about 40% buyers. So, okay, Mar- your market, are there less listings this year than last year? What, what's going on in your yes. market? Yes, so right now we've got about 2,200 total homes for sale. I mean, and we're selling 4,500 on average every month. So there's about a one week supply. If you're looking between you know, anywhere under 400,000, there's 10, 20, 30. I've had listings with 40 plus offers on them. And that's across the board right now. So let me ask you a question. Um, Last year, you did 41 transactions in COVID 2020, which 
had its own issues, some good, some bad, right? Right. What it looks like is already closed and pending through the end of May, first week or so of June, you've already closed and pending the same number of deals as all of last year. So you you guys are on track for 70 something, maybe 80 transactions. Yeah. Right? Is that what you guys are seeing too? Yeah, that's what we're seeing. I'm just praying it stays this way. I got it. I get it. Huh? Yeah. Uh, what's the difference, Tony? What's the um, difference? The biggest difference, uh, in, in my personal opinion, is one, we now have the ability to delegate. That, that was huge. Um, two, our, from what we're seeing, our, our databases, like we were just reaching out to our database all last year. So we were checking in, we were touching base during COVID just to see how they were doing. It gave us a lot more touching points. So this year they're just coming back. Um, and two, my wife, right before she had the baby, she had a goal to do what she did last year within the first six months. Cause she was going to take a maternity break. So we were really operating at 121%, like through the holidays. That was the biggest difference. Got it. So you pushed the envelope to quote unquote, make up the two or three months she was going to be potentially off. We just made a decision. Yeah. I, I think that's, I think that's fantastic. What if you did that like all year? Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> that would be amazing. Yes. It, it, and then that's, you know, I, that's something that, you know, as many people struggle with, it's that consistency that is my great, you know, is our greatest struggle. Just, just right. showing up and being at a high level every single day. No, it's, it's an issue and getting complacent, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. So 2020 hit us. Let's shift gears real quick. Okay. Mm -hmm. 2020, uh, we, we start 2020, January and February seems to be okay. We're hearing a little bit of rumblings about some problems in the rest of the world, but that's in the rest of the world that there's in you know, Las Vegas or Los Angeles. Then all of a sudden we run into the middle of March and things start to slow down and, and we start to, you know, a lot of uncertainty, probably better said than anything else. So how did that affect you guys mentally and what'd you do about it? Um, you know, that's a great question. I've been thinking about that a lot for the last few days. So one, when that happened, we had, about 12 properties under contract and I'd say nine or 10 of them fell out during wow. those months. Yeah. Wow. Because they, they shut everything down and you know, half the city wasn't working. Half of our customers were under contract ready to close and the lenders come back and say, Hey, I'm sorry if they're furloughed or if they're on unemployment, we can't close these deals. And it just, it felt like everything was falling. It felt like the sky was falling. It was a storm. Customers were crying. I had people, you know, crying about their deposits. And it just, it, it, in my personal career, it was the most difficult conversations I've ever had to have. And, and, I, and that's when the monkeys start jumping into your brain, right? That's when all these, the you know, the enemy monkeys. starts. Yeah, the drunk monkeys. Hey, you're going to have to go find a job. You know, this is all going to collapse. You're going to have to, you know, shift and, it, it took a lot of, you know, conversations with our coach, you know, I was really grateful that we were in coaching during that time um, because our coaches were just, you know, helping us strengthen our mindset. And one of the biggest things that really just kept me anchored were the words that tough times don't last, tough people do. Yeah. So it just, it, it was constant affirmations and constantly killing the automatic negative thoughts and, and just believing that we were going to get through this and that this fire, this storm that we were going through was only going to make us better. It's a great attitude. Fantastic. So the picture in Las Vegas, the picture that Juan painted me as we, Juan and I were talking um, probably every two or three days during this whole time as it, Juan's a, a great guy and, and we work together a lot on this, but he was sharing with me, uh, what percentage of your town, your business comes from the casinos? About one third. One third, okay. Yeah. I'm talking about the whole, the whole Las Vegas. One, yeah, one, one in three people that work here work at the casinos. Okay, and the casinos 
shut down almost immediately, right? Yeah. It was okay. weird seeing so, nobody in, on the strip. No casinos, no, no, uh, no dealers, no restaurants, no shows, no nothing. And then all the people that those people buy from, they get haircuts, buy cars from, they buy clothes from, they get their nails done. All of those people started feeling it. So your, your city, even more than Los Angeles, shut down. And you're going through this whole thing trying to figure out. So, so how long were you in this flux? Um, I'd say it was about three to four months. Okay. And then, so were you working the whole time? Were you, yeah, were yeah, you, I was working. It, it was, that. it was. All right, this is go time. You know, you were either gonna sink or we're gonna swim, and I didn't want to sink. It wasn't an option. We got I have a young kid, and sinking is not like that. That's just not in my wife's vocabulary. She's her work ethic is. Yeah, it just she's the true champion and she kept pushing us so we were working up we were waking up at five o'clock in the morning we made a commitment to do that we made a commitment to go to bed at nine o'clock and we made a commitment to just stick to our numbers and get back to the basics and that's really what helped carry us through that's fantastic so back to the basics for the balance of 2020 uh, let me ask you a question 19 what kind of business did you do in 2019, we did about, uh, I think it was 33 transactions. So 33 transactions in 2019. You had four months of what sounds like a pause in your business, and you still ended up with 41 deals. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. And you set yourself up, it sounds like, to have a fantastic um 2021. Now, I want to ask a question. You made a comment that 2021 has to do with uh, uh, having someone or part of your team, TC or an assistant, not quite sure exactly what they're doing, help you do some of the business that you could delegate to. But that costs money. So how did you get through those dynamics and that? Um, well, when we came up with a budget, you know, what can we afford? And, and we're going to start there. And two, it was, uh, there was a couple of things that had to happen simultaneously. One, you have to study how to become a leader. So Juan sat me down. He said, okay, you've, you've learned sales, you've learned the scripts, and this is now you need to focus on becoming a leader. You need to be, become focused reading books about management. So it was really shifting the mindset to, okay, now I have to become a business owner and think like this. It was, it was lots of coaching on how to think like a business person. So that was one aspect of it. The financial side, it was, it's just part of the business. You know, we're, we're paying for our mojo dollar. We're paying for marketing. We're paying for advertising. It, it's a necessity. And the other thing is we looked at how much we were making on the phones when we were prospecting. And then we looked at how much we're going to be paying somebody to do these hourly tasks and I, even though I've, 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 thought, I've heard it a thousand times, it was just kind of like, you know, we're ready. You know, we'll, we had enough reserves. And that was the other thing. We built up about six months worth of reserves. We were frugal. We stopped going out to eat. We cut out all unnecessary expenses anywhere we could because of COVID. You know, that forced us to do that. And then we just kept it that way. We just maintained that standard coaching, of living. Did you cut out coaching too? We actually jumped up to Premier. So ah. we went from one on one and I, I couldn't believe when my wife, she was like, okay, we're, we, we need to, uh, you know, upgrade to premiere. And I was like, are you, are you serious? And she was like, yeah, we, we, we need to double down on this commitment. And yeah. Good for you. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Okay. So right now, where's your, where's your, most of your business coming from? You're doubling your business. Um, about 40% of it is coming from past clients and COI, 18% is coming from expireds, and then 18% is coming from um, company-generated leads. Got it. And the past client and sphere stuff, how do you follow up on them? How often? So um, me and my wife, we have different approaches. So I'm high expressive, so it's really easy 
for me to just call, touch base and be very relationship oriented. Um, I, I, I believe firmly and I've been taught that Toma is really what I'm focused on. It's that top of mind awareness. I just need to touch them, you know, make an impression. I just got to touch them 32 times a year. And, and I mean, I've learned that from a lot of other top producers within the Mike Ferrier organization. I just need to touch them. I just got to be there with them. Somehow they got to see me. So one thing that I do with as many clients as I can, I do add them to Facebook just for the branding. It's not for me to get business from Facebook, but it's for me to stay in front of them. Um, another thing that we do is we do send a postcard at the beginning half of the year. And then at the end of the year, we're, we're sending a calendar or to-do list. And then we make personal live gift, holiday gift baskets for our AAA customers that are sending us business. So we do that. And then I, I do reach out and I do call them once a quarter. I have an Excel spreadsheet. I'll go through it. I know exactly how many people I need to touch every day. And that's it. We just call them and touch touch them. Angela likes to text them every, you know, some holidays we'll make a quick little video and we'll just send it to them via text. And that works really well. And then on the first of every month, I'm creating a, a, a Las Vegas real estate market report, you know, inventory levels, interest rate trends. And I have absolutely everybody on the database set up on that. And they're receiving that in a holiday email. So all those combined, you know, that's how we're hitting that 32 touches per year. So it's a total of 32 touches. Minimum, yeah. So we have agents, not in our company, but in the mastermind groups that have trouble making four phone calls a year. They don't know what to say. <laughs> how, do you, <laughs> how do you talk to people or touch people or email or text? What does it cost? Let, let's do a different thing because this is what's going in their head right now. So the money you spend on, not, not the phone calls, because that's, that's your, your time, but let's say mailers, your gift basket, your things that you do. Yeah. What does that cost you per person a year, do you think? Um, well, every holiday season we spend about, it's like about $1,000. It's really not much. Um, on just gift baskets and, and then about another $500 on calendars. So maybe $1,500, uh, a mailer, another 500 bucks. So all in all, maybe $3,000 a year for like all in. So maybe about $10 a person. Okay. And then, and then you're texting, which costs virtually nothing. And then you're emailing, right. Yep. And you're, and you're calling. So text, email, and calls, how many are those of the 32? Um, texts are about twice a year. Emails is once every month and once every holiday. This is so easy to set that up on the Century 21 Business Builder platform. And then just uh, three, four phone calls uh, a, a year. However, if they're AAA customers, like some of these guys, you know, they're investors, they're always sending me people, they got multiple properties. I'll call them every 30 days just to... I just like to touch base and say, hi, how are you? How's the family? You know, how's Betty? Juan taught me uh, early in the, you know, in my career for family, occupation, recreation, dreams. And I just leverage that, that you know, across the board. I, I make a little note in my Excel spreadsheet. What's their dog's name? You know, what's their wife's name? What are their kids' names? You know, do they have hobbies? Do they have dreams? What are their passions? And I'll just touch base and say, how, how are you doing? I just call in a touch base. That's it. So you... You have all, all, how many people in your database? Uh, right now, there's about 354. And 40% is past client and sphere. Yeah. Um, so it should be about 120 of your transactions, and you're not quite at 120, but you're running probably 5% right now. No, maybe, yeah. maybe 3 or 4%. What, what do you think you'd have to do to move that needle up to get closer to the 10%? And is that possible? So, so yes. Um, and, and here's the thing. So I have two databases. One is at about 189. Those are the people that I'm touching every quarter. I'm calling them. I'm, I'm fanatical about it. I'm focused. There's about 189 people there. Then I have a separate database of just People that, you know, that said, yeah, you know, you can add me to the database. I'm not ready right now, but I might be in six months or, 
you know, the people that just aren't doing anything, never actually did business with me, but would like that report, I'll put them in that 354. And they could just, they just sit there until they either unsubscribe or whatever it be. But the 189, those are the people that if I can't make that phone call, I'll have to delete them off the list. And that's, that's getting tailor suited every few months. Got it. Okay. Sounds fantastic. Very, very good. Okay. You mind taking a few questions? Oh, absolutely. All right. Very good. Okay. So let's open it up, Tony, for some questions. Who just raise your hand or, or uh, go ahead, Linda. Um, so uh, you caught my attention when you said that your wife kind of doubled down. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, doubled down before she went on maternity leave. How did she do that? What did she do? Um, one, uh, she are you her... trying to tell us something? <laughs> no, <laughs> those <laughs> days are gone. <laughs> um, so one, she, she made a decision. Uh, two, she made a declaration. She announced it to absolutely everybody. Um, three, she analyzed her numbers and she really focused on what does that mean? Like how many contacts did I have to do to get these deals last year? And then do I, I just double that? And we went through our coach when it came to that. And then the last big thing she really did was she, she upped her accountability across the board. So one, we went from one-on-one -on -one to premier Two, she's involved in a, a role play group and a prospecting online group. And she wrote everybody a check and said, Hey, if I'm not here, you know, if, I, if I'm not on the, the prospecting call with you guys at this specific time, I think the check was for like $250. She wrote like three of them. And she also wrote um, John Hoffman from Florida. She wrote him a $3,000 check and said, I'm going to send you my listing presentation every Friday. And if I don't send it to you, you can cash the check. So she just, she just raised yeah. that. And, and she missed one with John Hoffman too, which was crazy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he sent it in the next day. Wow. He was, he he was gracious enough to, yeah, he was gracious enough to only charge us for half though. <laughs> wow, that is it. great. I love it. Thank you. Good. Great question. Yeah, Thanks, Tony. Good. Um, uh, somebody had asked in the chat box, uh, Tony, what, uh, what are you using for database? Um, what do you... CRM. Yeah. So, so that's a really good question. And that's been an area that I've been studying and, and just, I've looked at, I've looked at a lot of different platforms and, and really the one that works best is the one that you use um, for the first, <laughs> for the first uh, few years of my career, really my only CRM was the business builder. Uh, I, I have a business builder uh, actually still today, still till today. I use the biz, uh, century 21 business builder system for all of my, um, market updates. I create those market updates on Canva, which is a very simple platform. Uh, it's free canva.com. You go on there, you make your report. And then every month you just go in there and change the numbers. Super simple. Um, and then I send it through there. The second one for all my, my actual database, 189 people is an Excel Google spreadsheet. Like it's just, it's just a spreadsheet name, number notes, just keep it simple. Um, and that's what I use. Nothing complicated. I, I've looked into the complicated platforms, um, you know, for, for the leads and, and, you know, moving to the leads because that's a different, um, you know, it's a different bucket. Those people, I still, till this day, I personally, and so does Angela, we use a three by five card system. So since the beginning, Juan taught me the three by five card system. And that's still till today, what we use for our leads. Awesome. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Other questions of Tony. Good stuff here. Thank you, sir. Uh, go ahead, uh, uh, Josie. Josie. Hi, Tony. Thank you so much. It's Thank you. Good to see somebody energetic and young doing this. So you said that. Juan taught you from the very beginning. Uh, when you make your phone calls to your past clients and sphere, talk about family, occupation, and what were the other two? recreations like hobbies personal interests and their dreams yeah good okay thank you so much and, yeah absolutely and, and one more thing with that is 
Um, I usually always have my favorite go-to is, you know, a lot of people have questions about the market and I was just curious, is there anything that I can help you with at this time? And my personal approach, and I think what works really well for me is that I never, and even still to this day, I really don't flat out ask for business. I just come with an attitude of contribution and I'm always looking for ways that how I can help them. And that is really the goal of every call that I make to my database. Very good, great ideas, thank you. Okay, others, raise your hands please, or just ask out. Other questions for Tony? Um, Tony? No, I have a question, Neil, sorry. Go ahead. Um, you mentioned multiple times delegating. So what <laughs> were you delegating? What was I delegating? Yeah, so what or what did you start <laughs> delegating to make your life easier? So um, the first thing, which was really the biggest help, was writing offers. Um, because when we hired our assistant, you know, six months, nine months ago, um, we were writing 20 plus offers for every buyer just to get them under contract. So it was just ridiculously tedious writing up offers. Um, the second thing that we ended up delegating was just getting the packages ready, the pre-listing packages, inputting the listing agreements, pretty much a lot of the things that a regular transaction coordinator would do for you is what we started delegating. That, that was like the biggest help. And, and then eventually we got her to the point where um, we just started delegating the entire escrow process. And every time we sat down, it was just conversations of, you know, what else can we delegate to you? You know, are you ready for this yet? But it was focusing on getting her, you know, mastering one thing at a time. Because the problem is, is that it's, it's a big elephant. You know, we do a lot and we, every transaction is different, but we can do a lot on every transaction. And it's just a big elephant. So it's just eating it one bite at a time, taking it one step at a time, but just staying consistent with that growth. Excellent, good stuff. Um, go go ahead, Abigail. How many calls do you make in a day now? First um, so now's a little different. Um, and, and it's just, I'm trying to get back to the basics and get back to what I was doing before. Um, now, if you're referring just as far as contacts, uh, my goal is a minimum of 30 contacts a day. So I'm not really doing high contacts yet because I'm doing a lot more quality contacts. Um, and Angela was right around that same 30 a day. We were focused a little bit more on being consistent with making those calls um, versus because it'll take what happened after within the last year is that the auto dialer system here locally changed. So I, for the last few years, I would use a triple dialer. I'm using Mojo and I'm just dialing three lines at one time. And I was averaging about 24 contacts an hour. Um, so I was making about 60 contacts a day, but now we can't use that anymore. It's illegal. We get fined. So we had to go back to single dialing. So that's why my numbers are a little bit lower now. So about two hours on the phone, 30 contacts a day is the goal, but uh, is what we're doing now. But the goal is to get the transaction coordinator to do whatever it is that, you know, just to get her comfortable and continue to delegate to her, hire a showing agent so I don't have to go out and show properties. And then just really just stay on the phone for five, six hours a day. I mean, that's that's the the plan to get to to break a hundred transactions. So Tony, it sounds like um, by by slowing down to speed up, meaning your contacts, um, you're getting better quality and doing more transactions with less contacts, is what it kind of sounds like. Yeah. Right. Well, well, over the years, it's just, you know, your skills, you, you continue to get better. It, it's, I, I don't have to make, in the beginning, I, I was at maybe 1,200 contacts uh, to an appointment taken. Now I'm at about 189 before I take an appointment. Um, a portion of that, yes, is the skill level. You know, you, you're just much more skilled after you go through 1,000 contacts. When you make 100 contacts every day, it's not about, you know, the business you get from it, in my personal opinion, it's about who you become. It's about the skills that you develop having gone through the fire 
right? Forging your, your, your sharpening your sword through the process. And now I can hop on the phone and it doesn't, I don't lose as many, not as many people slip through the cracks. It's a lot easier for me to convert a, you know, to an appointment. It's a lot easier for me to go through the prequal a hundred percent, which is why now my listing appointment ratios, you know, just went from, I think it was like 40% my first year. And then last year it was right around 95%. So that that's something that you, you know, you continue to, to improve. And also as you continue to grow, you get busy, right? It's, it's, it's a lot harder to stay on the phone for three to four hours a day when you've got 10 escrows, you know, and you've got 10 listings and you've already hit your goal. You know, you've already done business for last year. And that complacency starts to sink in. And that starts to sink in even at the beginning. Like uh, I was making $30,000 a year before I got into real estate. I come in I get my first check. It's 10 grand. I don't got to come to work for another few weeks is, you know, that's where that complacency starts to seep in. Um, so, so yeah. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. And, and that just keeps going. You know, you're doubling your business now and you're making twice as much money so far this year as you made last year. I mean, you, you, uh, you get complacent. Uh, there was a, there was a question in the chat box from Manuel, uh, what would any recommendations on how to study the market so that you can communicate it? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, one is like for what worked really well for me is that Canva market report that I made, which has the current active inventory levels, what's under contract, what's pending, um, short sales and foreclosures temporarily off the market expired. And I want to keep an eye on that because there's a lot of talk of the market's going to shift. Inventory is going to go through the roof. You know, forbearances are going to expire. You know, the eviction moratoriums are going to, you know, go, you know, expire. So I'm keeping an eye on that. And one thing that by having that there, and then it, it's just getting it started, right? It's getting it going. It takes a lot of time to sit down and just make your list. And then after that, every month, it's just so much easier to go in there. And now I know here are my numbers I got to look at. I go into the MLS, I check the numbers. And now when I come to, to have conversations with people, I'm coming from a place of knowledge, which makes it a lot easier for me to have those conversations. That's one. Two, um, you got to study. Um, study, practice, teach. If you want to teach these things to people, you have to study these things. So I'm always on YouTube and I'm wa I like to follow a lot of um, a lot of people who talk about the market. Um, Stephen Graham is one. He's he's millions of subscribers, and he's just always talking about you know the, just the market in general across the nation and here locally. Um, so I'm studying constantly. Um, maybe go to an event. We had the Century Twenty One Americana Summit where they had you know speakers come in and just kind of speak wisdom on that subject, and it just really helps. The more you study, the more you the more you learn, the easier it is for you to teach. Good stuff. Tony, this is Fred Salas from the Irvine office. I, I want to back up. Uh, Mike talked all throughout 2020 about adapt, adapt, adapt. Oh, yeah. Give me two or three keys to your success last year when the pandemic hit regarding mindset, not your activities, just regarding mindset. How did you adapt during that time to su succeed the way you did? Thank you for that question, Fred. So I, I wrote down uh, some real, uh, so some, of, some of those points of, as far as mindset and what we had to do to adapt. So one thing uh, just off the top of my head that we had to do to adapt um, was double down. It was the, okay, we were making, you know, we were averaging 20 contacts a day. We weren't necessarily hitting that minimum standard. And it was like, okay, no more. We're going to have to hit that standard. Some days we would show up, you know, We'd wake up at seven instead of five and it was no, the alarm's being set and there, there's no excuses. It was just no more excuses. We're, we're after our results and we just wanted it badly enough. So let's see here. Um, a couple of things. Uh, and, and the other thing was it was realizing how important our job was and how much value we were actually bringing to people and how important it was to continue to sharpen our skills. So let's see here. Um, one thing that I wrote down is it can be the best of times and the worst of times at the same time. So 
we and that that was that was a time where we started studying the five equities of life it's the spiritual the mental the financial uh the family and the health so one thing was we had to be very attentive of our health so we made a decision that we were going to join the 5 a.m club so there's a great book called the 5 a.m club and it's just it was very it it was very intentional about waking up and pushing out all the negativity because now there was more, there was more drama, there were more problems, there was more chaos than ever before. And we had to be extra intentional about pushing all that out because if not, it's just completely, it'll just completely take over, right? If you don't, if you don't take out the weeds, they'll take over your garden. And and that's really what was starting, we were starting to see. So it was, it was being very, very intentional about our time management, about waking up early, about going to bed early, about eating healthy, about surrounding ourselves with the right people. Um, COVID was a blessing in disguise in a way because it gave us an excuse to push out certain negative influences in our lives and really just focus on ourselves for a while. So those were a couple of the things. Um, And now as far as mindset, um, let's see here. Um, One thing was it's uh, Jim Rohn was one of like, we were listening to him every single day. And, you know, what he talks about how don't wish for a, you know, to wish for a better wind is is naive, you know, wish for your ability to navigate. Yes, but wish for a better sail. And don't wish for less problems, wish for more wisdom, right? Wish for more strength. And it's just, you know, here are the problems. What do we got to do? What's the solution? So it was, it was, it was being very intentional about working on the mindset every single morning. You know, I've been listening to Jim Rohn for 35 years and he continues to teach me because the lessons I learned with the same message 30 years ago are not the same lessons I'm learning now. Right. He is just extraordinary. I'm going to see you in Vegas, right? You're going to be there. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Together, buddy. I want to talk to you. All right. Good, good question, Fred. Um, Excellent, Tony. Linda, you had another question there, Linda Holmes. Yeah, I was wondering, you mentioned that you have three different languages that you have clients that speak. Um, how, what are you doing to uh, delegate? What, uh, how do you deal with that while you're in escrow with the you know, clients that are not speaking English? Uh, so good question. Um, unfortunately, um, since our assistant doesn't speak Spanish, there's only, well, it, it's not that bad because really it's just, we have to call to explain and then we just ask her to send the document. So they're not really, and the other thing is because of all the adapt and going back to adapting, COVID-19 really did force a lot of people to get off of the paper and pen and move towards electronic signatures. So it's just a lot easier for me to say, hey, here, send these documents and let me just give them a call. And then I just pick up the phone, have a conversation, and that's it. It just, it really made business a little bit easier Thank in you. that aspect. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Good stuff. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, please unmute yourselves. Let's thank Tony. Great job. Excellent today. Thank you. Woo! Thank you, Tony. Hi. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you, Tony. Congratulations stuff. on the baby. And yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Um, Miriam, if you or Robert, if you guys would post uh, his information, that would be great. And then Tony, what we do right now is we take a few minutes afterwards and kind of, and you're welcome to stay with us or if you have a hard stop and got to go, we understand it. Um, But we'll talk about what we learned today and take a few minutes and do that. But Tony, truly, thank you. Really, really one of of the great... uh, uh, calls, mastermind calls that we've had in a long time. So thank you for your time. Congratulations on your new baby and congratulations on all the good business and things that are coming. And, you know, like Fred said, you know, love to meet you in person, buy you a drink uh, when we get to Vegas here at the Superstar Retreat. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And if I may leave you guys with one more thing, I uh, completely forgot I was going to uh, answer, mention this to Fred, is one other thing that I learned is always bring hope home. Um, you know, it gets very chaotic at work. And one thing that I really learned and, and I learned it was most valuable thing I learned during that time was for the ability to compartmentalize 
I have a few friends that are doctors and police officers, and I learned that from them because when it's chaos at work, you got to leave that at work and bring the hope home. So aside from that, thank you guys so much for your great, time. Great I look forward plot. to meeting you guys Thanks soon. Thanks for ending, yeah, ending it on thank a Thank you. Really That's fun. a great point. Right. Keep All right, thank let's you. give a big hand. Let's go one more Yay. time. Woo! Oh. Nice. Good thank you guys. All right, Tony, good work. Thank you. Okay, what we learned today, and it was a lot, two pages of notes for me. What did we learn today? Can I say something? Of course. Um, I learned is when you talk to your, uh, people, your VIP people, always come in as contribution, always come in like how I can help. Um, I think that's very important. And also I learned, you know, I think I did a pretty good in delegation, but I learned you know, we can delegate more, like, you know, writing offers and, um, you know, just delegate more. Okay, good. <laughs> you know, our time is worth more money. Perfect. Good job, Yvonne. Excellent. What else did we learn today? Well, that's good. When the, when the crack is the fan, you double down. You don't back up. You double down down. Yeah, that you was find another great. gear and you move forward. Great advice. Thanks, Brad. Good stuff. Uh, Robert. Well, my top two points just got taken, <laughs> <laughs> which, which were delegate, 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 uh, delegate, delegate. And then when you're done delegating, delegate some more and double down going all in. So that was it. So, so I'll, you know, write down one of my other notes, and it's actually something, Neil, you talk about all the time is the power of YouTube. And he mentioned mindset and he's on YouTube. He's listening to uh, Stephen Graham or anyone else and Jim Rohn and all these other different things. And boy, I tell you, it's in our industry, you know, you have a lot, it's, it's tough getting rejected all day. And so if you're not protecting your mindset and using something like YouTube for little short breaks every so often, it, it can be tough. So I thought that was a great reminder. Yeah, it was very good, let, excellent. Let me piggyback on that, Robert, if I may, Neil. Um, about two years ago, I decided I'm gonna invest $12 a month to have the unlimited library, which is YouTube, commercial free. We don't watch commercial television in my house, no matter what. Okay, ever. but when you spend that 12 bucks for YouTube, not it's just YouTube premium, it's not YouTube TV. The access of information instantaneously is limitless. And I, I've been watching, um, geez, uh, Frank Abagnale, Catch Me If You Can, and his story. I heard it in 1983, changed my line of thinking, but to see it again and again in 12 bucks. It'll be the best 12 bucks you spend. If you don't have premium YouTube, you're wasting time listening to ads and commercials that aren't going to help you one bit to do a better job. Yeah, but I'm advertising there. So come on. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, good stuff. Very good idea. All right. Uh, what else? What else did we learned today? Go um, Tony, thank you very much for your time. But I forgot to ask you this question. I wanted to ask you, when you, you give gift a basket, so first of all, what do you put in there? And also, do you personally drop off or you just mail to them? Or you knock on their door, if they're home, you talk to them, if they're not home, you drop it off. How do you do that? So in oh. interesting. Um, I, so I, I have a group of kids. Um, so I, I serve in the youth ministry at the church and I got a, about 12 kids. So every holiday season, I invite them over to the house. I have them sit down. I have them make the gift baskets. Um, I, I delegate, um, you know, I have one person go to the dollar store and we'll buy a thousand things to put in the, the gift baskets. That's how each gift basket will only cost a $10, $10 maximum. And then we just bring it all home. I have all the kids do it. And then I have the assistant get in the car. I have them map it out. I have them drop it off and they take, and that's it. So I, I don't do a whole lot of work for that. One of the things that I do put in there, 
um, that's really, that I've found is gets me the be best response is in there. I'll put the annual calendar. I don't get the big one. I get the little magnet one with the business card on top. So that's always on the fridge cost a dollar a piece that goes in there along with a to-do list that says, uh, don't just sit there and do something. And it's like a little checklist and th those little two things, people will call, they'll thank you. And, and then the most important part is that you follow up really the key to that is that you call them and you say, Hey, just wanted to touch base and see if you received the gift basket. That's how you're not spending a whole lot of time on it. And it doesn't cost you, you know, 20, $30 a gift basket. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think it's a thought that counts. Hey, hey, yeah, that's a great idea. Hey, fun, that's Michael, great. go ahead. I got a question, Tony. Uh, when you are prospecting and you happen to have a seller, they say, I want to sell con contingent on me to buy. What's typically your approach, especially in this hot market? It's hard to find properties with multiple offers. How would you take that listing? Um, so if I'm on the phone with them, I'm like, I'm, that's exactly why we need to meet. You know, that's exactly why I want to talk to you. And I get to get all energetic and excited. That's really, uh, you know, we'll go over a couple of different options. I'm just here to give you the information so you can make a well-informed decision. And then I get there and I just give them the options. Really, it's, it's, it's it, for every person, it's a little different. Some people might have a family member that they can stay with to make the process easier. Some people don't have that. So I, I found that everybody's needs are a little bit different. My job is just to give them the options and walk, that, walk them down those paths and give them the hypothetical scenarios and what could play out and then let them make a well-informed decision. Um, because in this marketplace, what's most common is a rent back. You know, you rent the property back for two months after closing and you move into the next property. Unfortunately, in this marketplace where you're writing 15, 20 offers, you, you don't want to be in a position where you do the rent back and you can't get an offer and accepted. So what is our plan B? And then it just get there and just like, let's just come up with a game plan. And, and really the key to that is, is when you're there, and this is one thing that my coach taught me, the most important thing is that you find out if they're moving away from pain or towards pleasure. That, that's the key. And you have to leverage that and continue to leverage that in every conversation moving forward in the transaction. Are they moving towards pain, away from pain, or are they moving towards pleasure? and just walk them down those paths. Thank you. All right. Absolutely. Stuff. All right. Other things that we learned today from Tony. Is there anything highly that you recommend from the uh, Mike Ferry? Like, for example, I know some other agents have recommended like Volt. Um, other extra additional things that you might recommend? Oh, like the Volt? Um, yeah, the Volt is great. Um, I, my biggest recommendation is just to go to all the events. Um, I didn't miss a retreat the first, I think, eight years. I, I, since my, the, I started, I've only missed, I think, one or two. Um, that, that's by far. Take lots of good notes um, and, and meet other people. Really, one of the biggest benefits that I've ever gotten from my ferry was the influence that you get from being able to sit down with somebody who's doing 100 or 200 transactions and just one, realizing that they're normal people just like you and me. And the only difference between them and, and us is that the big shots just keep on shooting. Like they just keep doing it. They just keep pushing forward. They've all failed. Um, and then when it goes back to Mike Ferry, um, you know, just get involved with the role play groups, get involved with those mastermind groups. Those, those really just pay dividends that, you know, just in abundance thereof. So that, that would be my biggest advice. All right. Good stuff. All right. Unmute yourselves. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you again, Tony. Woo! All right. Thank you, Tony. Thank you Good so much.